Hi there, this is Allison from Let's Go Travel Tips, and today I want to talk to you a little a bit about Rome, Italy. So Rome, Italy is called the Eternal City, and it is called that for a reason. It is a glorious, magical city. It is so beautiful there. There is so much history and so much of Italian life to embrace, to learn about, and to enjoy while you're there. I've been to Rome several times. I've been there just to visit the city, and then three of the times that I've been there was to depart on a Mediterranean cruise each time. And um, it, it is one of my very favorite places on the earth. And so as you think about going to Rome, there's a couple of things that I just want you to keep in mind so that when you get there, you're not surprised or taken aback. And one of the things is, is that the further south you go in Europe, things become a little less, I would say, organized and not in a bad way because um, you will notice that maybe more in Northern Europe, things are a little bit more structured. When you go into an eating establishment, for example, or trying to order food, people will queue up and they'll stand in an orderly line. Um, but in Southern Europe, Italy, it's not that way at all. You'll just need to learn to wiggle your way up for your turn to order food or buy tickets or enter an establishment, whatever it is. Now, it doesn't mean that that is bad because I think part of the magic of Italy is um, the Italian people's amazing ability to embrace life, to live in the moment, to be happy where they are and to enjoy um, their beautiful country. And so it's not bad at all. Just be aware of that because if you go and you try to stand in line, it will never be your turn because everyone will just move kind of in front of you. So just keep that in mind and just be ready to participate with the Italians in the way they do that. Another way is just know that um, if you schedule a car or you schedule, schedule a tour, that it's not gonna depart. If it's scheduled for five o'clock, it's not gonna be five o'clock on the dot. And so just be aware of that. Be aware that things will take a little bit longer and so plan that into your schedule. Once again, it's not a bad thing. If you're left waiting for a few minutes, just look around and enjoy where you are because it's truly beautiful. So as you fly into Rome, um, I've just landed at the, um, my, I don't really speak Italian. And so um, the, air, the ma main airport there in Rome, I think it's called Fiumicino is how you pronounce it. And so you land there and the easiest way to get into Rome if you just want to head straight into the city to see things really is on the Leonardo Express, which is a train that goes directly from the airport over to Termini, which is the main terminal in Rome. And so as you get your baggage collected or you get off the plane and you um, follow the signs that tell you towards ground transportation, you will follow, um, just go down a long hallway and you will see some kiosks. They're red and you can go up to them and it's really nice because you can buy tickets for whatever transport you want to buy there, but they have them for the Leonardo Express. And so you can just select a time. So look at your watch and allow yourself 15 or 20 minutes to get there and go ahead and buy your ticket there and then you simply walk down there will be signs and usually there's even a few um, airport workers that can direct you if you seem a little bit lost and you simply get on the train and head into termini you just hold on to your ticket it's really important to have a ticket because um, sometimes they will come to get a ticket and sometimes they won't and so be honest and buy a ticket don't just get on the train um, I've seen them take people off the train before for not having a ticket. And so once you get into, it takes about um, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes to get into town. And there you land in Termini. Now Termini is the big main train station. It's wonderful because it's so huge. It has places to buy food. It has eating establishments, little grocery store type places. It has um, clothing establishments. It has um, drug stores, if you need a pharmacy to pick up something that you forgot in the United States, you know, when you were packing and realize you need, or if you have to, um, if you stay at a hotel close to there, if you need something, it's really easy to pop back over. Termini does have a reputation for being a place where people like to pickpocket. And so that doesn't mean be afraid, it just means be conscientious. I always wear a crossbody purse and I keep it right in front of me and I keep a firm hold on my suitcase and no one has ever bothered me. Um, so just keep that in mind, be wise. I think that 
a lot of people just aren't careful and it makes them easy targets. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, when you're going to leave Termini, they have er, er, um, exits on different sides. Well, the entrances and exits are the same doors, but they're on different sides of the building. And so if you have a chance, before you leave on your trip, look and see which um, exit you're going to want to go out of. There are taxis by the entrance exit so that you can easily get a taxi to a um, where the hotel that you're staying in or um, we always stay somewhere close enough to Termini that we can walk there. The last time we were there which is in 2019 we stayed at um, a Best Western and I will list that in um, the show more section of my video here but it was wonderful. It's just across the street from Termini. It was very handy, very clean. They had a restaurant with um, good food in there in the hotel and they speak English there. Um, they're very helpful and it's a really nice place because then the next, when you want to go, um, if you want to ride the Metro somewhere, you're right handy there to Termini to, to get on to whatever train you want to ride. And so that's a good thing. And then two, two other times that I've stayed right by Termini have been in Airbnbs and I highly recommend those as well. They were very clean. The people that run them were so very kind and it worked out really well for us. And so those are the times we stayed close. Now, if you wanna stay in a hotel that's a little further away, just take a taxi and there'll be, um, there's always lots and lots of taxis. That's really easy to do. And so often when I get in a taxi, well, always in Rome, I always ask how much it will cost to get to the destination that I'm going to because um, Believe it or not, sometimes they charge different amounts. And so, um, for example, if you get in and you're going to the Villa Borghese, you just ask how much and they'll tell you. And if you're happy with that, say okay. Otherwise say, I don't think it should be quite so much. How about, and offer them a lesser amount. But that's only if you feel like you're being taken advantage of. And so um, that's a good thing to remember about the taxis there. Very easy to get and very easy to use. So often um, when I am in Rome and I'm going there and then I'm going to depart on a cruise, we always go early so that we can sightsee. Now there are so many places you're gonna wanna sightsee at in Rome and I'll do another video about that, but you're going to want to allow even just to see the very basics, um, you're gonna want to allow two or three days if you can. And that is just, um, visiting the top of the iceberg and um, you need to plan into your schedule a little bit of time to sit in the piazzas and just enjoy being where you are and the beautiful fountains and the lovely people and just drink in everything there. So once I am done visiting in Rome and I want to get out to the cruise port, I think you call it Civitavecchia. Uh, once again, that's I don't have good Italian. But when it's time to go out there, sometimes people will hire a car service. You can hire a car that will come to your airport and take you directly to the port. You can also ride a bus. And when you ride a bus from Rome, you can um, get on wherever is handy for you, depending on where you're staying. And then they will take you down by the cruise port, but they, they don't take you directly to your ship. They will take you to a kind of a central um, little, uh, it's not a piazza, but it's just this little central area of the port. And then you have to take your luggage and walk to wherever your cruise ship is stocked. And so that's um, cheaper, but it's not um, as handy and as convenient. And also um, two times that I have been in Rome on short notice, the bus drivers decided to go on strike. And so I, I want you to know that I am one of those travelers that I love to see things, I love to take everything in, but I really am firm on knowing how I'm going to get to really important places on my trip. And so you're going to want to make sure that um, if you plan on using the bus, that you kind of have a backup plan in mind so that if they go on strike, you've thought it through. And so what we like to do is we'll go ahead and go back to the Termini and once you go in Termini, you'll see they have the red kiosks, again, lots and lots of them that you can buy a ticket on the Leonardo Expressway back to um, the airport again. And the reason that I like the Leonardo Express is because it's a little bit, it's a little, it just costs a little bit more than the regular train, but it goes much quicker. It's also cleaner. 
and um, it just works really nice for taking your luggage. And every time that I have been on it, it has been, um, there has been plenty of room that if you wanted to slide your, if you happen to have a big suitcase, you can slide it into the little feet area of the seat next to you um, to be able to hold on to it. But they also have those racks um, where you can put your luggage as well if it's crowded. So it just works really nice for travel and it's not expensive. Like I said, it's a little more than the regular train, but it is surely worth it. And I, um, I wouldn't call me a crazy budget traveler, but I'm not wealthy and I like to be careful what I spend my money on and I think that that's worth it. And so um, you go to those kiosks and once again buy another um, ticket to get on the train back and once again you'll want to check the time, you'll look at what time it is because they offer them very frequently and you just want to make sure you can get on it. And so then you go back to the airport. Now I um, only cruise with Princess at this point in my life but I know this is universal for all the cruise lines. When they run shuttles from the airport to the cruise port, they always pick you up in baggage claim, in arrivals down there. And so all you do when you get back to the airport is go over to baggage claim and you start looking for your cruise company's representatives. And so if you um, have gone ahead and paid for the shuttle in advance, which you can do, on all of you know with the different cruise lines then they've got you on their list and the really nice thing that i like there is you just give them your luggage and the next time you see it it shows up in your stateroom and so you don't have to worry about that anymore and the whenever i have compared the price to have a car service pick you up at your hotel and take you to the port it is always more expensive to have a car service and the other thing that I really like is sometimes car services. I know someone that uses car services usually there and they always have to wait. And um, they've been a little bit tight on time before because their driver has come late. And so I really like the assurity that you have that the um, your cruise line will get you to the port on time. You don't have to worry about it. If there's a big traffic jam, the ship's not going to leave without you because you're going to be on the bus with a whole bunch of other of your fellow cruise passengers. And so, um, and like I said, I the price is very good. And so they'll and they pull you right up to your ship. They can go inside of the security um, lanes there, and um, they just pull you right up to your ship. And so it works perfectly. It's much more smoothly than taking a bus. It's smoother than taking a car service and I think you're gonna really like it. And so that's a really handy thing to know. And um, just, I am not a big shopper. I believe more in spending time enjoying and making memories than buying things. But if you go to that part of the world, you might wanna just take, um, I usually take a little collapsible bag that um, is checkable. It folds up really small. I just got it at Walmart and um, and then by the end of my trip, if I have bought anything, then you can just put it in there and check another bag to go home. And I also take a carry-on that I leave some space in as well, so that it's actually a very Vera Bradley bag, and I can um, link that for you below, and maybe in another travel video I'll show it to you. But it's really handy, so if you buy something that is like a beautiful vase in Italy, then you have somewhere to put it to bring it home and you don't have to worry about it breaking. But those are just a few of my travel tips for Rome. Um, just enjoy it when you go. And in the comment section, if you would like to ask me any questions that might help me do a better job in talking about Rome, I'm happy to make another video and add some pictures, um, any other pictures that you would like and um, give you any more information that might be helpful. I think I've been there so many times that maybe I don't remember everything that I was worried about and wanted to know the very first time I went. But I sure do thank you for watching my video. We're working really hard to get our travel videos up and we're going to try to be a really good resource for all of you travelers out there. And I know that I have learned so much from a lot of other YouTubers and I look forward to joining this community. I sure love you all. Hit the subscribe button with the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos and would love to have you in the family. You take care and, and safe travels to all of you. Bye-bye.